Bosch has been the designer and manufacturer of electromagnetic systems since the first Magneto. Um, so in terms of electric motors, electric drives, starters and generators, solenoids, we have our injection systems, you know, from electrical systems, traction control, engine control. And so we have all these experiences. Additionally, in 1971, there's a world record of the Opel GT hybrid, which used Bosch hybrid, um, Bosch motor and power electronics. In 2012, we had our first full electrified EV powertrain system in the Fiat 500. Mm -hmm. And so we've taken all these experiences and, and really put them into this uh, most advanced product. This is the e-axle, it's integrated. We have the uh, motor, optimized motor, gearbox, and electromagnetics, and, and then the inverter. This is a very scalable product. Mm -hmm. uh, it's optimized, it's scalable. So we can go from 50 kilowatt all the way up to 300 kilowatt in terms of uh, axle torque, 1,000 newton meter up to 6,000 newton meter. Um, really the benefits of this is the cost efficiency from uh, design, from simulations, and then uh, to also help get the cost down would be a manufacturing strategy, footprint, highly scalable. Additionally, we could have a permanent mag magnet or an induction motor, mm -hmm. and I bring that up because we, send, we see for a lot, a lot of electric vehicles, permanent magnet for traction motors in the rear, and then induction machine in the front. An induction machine you could use for boost as well as uh, traction control for an you know, all-wheel drive, electric all-wheel drive. From a simulations and overall system efficiency perspective, we see a lot of the OEMs using their uh, primary drive for a permanent magnet. And then the benefit of an induction machine is you don't have to have a uh, disconnect clutch. Uh, so you only use the induction motor when you need it. Okay, right. And, and then we can also remove the park lock and, and really optimize the layout. Right, so you can have much smaller right. at the front. Okay, that makes, And that makes again, it comes sense. down to OEM um, strategy. Mm -hmm. Some OEM may want, they may want to have induction machine in front and rear. We can certainly support that. So we have a, a number of technologies in here. Mm -hmm. um, here's uh, our EV station. This basically shows our overall portfolio. Um, you know, obviously we have motors. Um, this is active parts for an IMG for a P2 system, uh, hybrid. Uh, this is our third generation motor with integrated power electronics, so standalone components. Um, and then you see additional parts of an electric vehicle or hybrid. Uh, battery pack, um, we have electric stability program, uh, we have an electromechanical braking system. Um, and together they will work with the hybrid to do regenerative braking and enable right. regenerative braking. And I guess one, one comment here, we can realize 5 to 10 percent cost efficiency over standalone components when we move to an integrated solution. So you see here we're getting rid of the expensive uh, three-phase cabling, high voltage cabling. We have integrated uh, um, the bar uh, connectors. So that's another way we can get the cost more attractive for the, our customers and then in turn end users. A couple more remarks from uh -huh. the e-axle. We said highly scalable mm -hmm. uh, induction machine which is magnet free or permanent magnet and based on the OEM strategy, he may want a higher power permanent magnet traction motor in the rear, induction motor in the front. Uh, could be induction motors in front and rear so we have that uh, flexibility and really we, we've taken all of our experiences from the past, from single opponents and uh, full powertrain system. We've come up with a scalable product uh, to meet the unique requirements. You know, from a compact car, uh, for city driving, those may have different technical requirements versus maybe a sports car. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the greatest things about this scalable product. And, and really our vision here is enable electrification for the masses. And that's what this product helps, uh, helps do. We have a, a CAN interface. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the via, uh, OEMs would send us commands and we would execute them, and everything's in one package. So this solution certainly enables efficiencies on the OEM part. You can also imagine from a production standpoint, having one part number and one part to install is much more attractive right. than multiple components. Yep. And then you have all the wiring and, and such. And we have a recent poll saying that 62% of buyers expect to have an EV in 10 years. Um, so it's certainly moving in that direction. We also see a trend that uh, electromobility is tied to automated driving. That's obviously moving. We've right. seen that in, and uh, electromobility will, will follow that. So we're developing our, a traditional powertrain. Um, we're focusing on e-mobility. And again, it's electrification for the masses. So we're taking all these system experiences in this e-axle. It could be for straight EVs. It could be for hybrids. Maybe adding electric axle for all-wheel drive. 
If you have a front wheel drive, uh, which is a lot of the cars are in the US, you could use electric axle in the rear to give you deliver electric all wheel drive. Um, you could have, if it's a longitudinal transmission, uh, maybe in an SUV or pickup truck, we could add a, a motor inside the transmission. We have integrate our active parts um, for a, a P2, a uh, parallel hybrid. Um, so we could offer both. And uh, also based on uh, CO2 for 2025, uh, we expect to see additional electrification. Um, we anticipate OEMs will have uh, a minimum of 15% in their fleet. Um, but every OEM has a different strategy, and, and as we see in the press, it's constantly changing. Yep. Some OEMs might go with additional electrification. 